Hello there. So now we're going to wind the, the finished yarn from our spindle onto a knitty knotty. So to get it ready to be washed and uh, put into a hank. So the way that I normally do that is I'll put my spindle downside into a jar or you can use a large bowl and I wind it on a knitty knotty. Now we have a, a post on our blog about how to make your own knitty knotty if you're interested in that. If you don't want to use that, you can use the back of two chairs, like two kitchen chairs put together and just wrap around that. What you're trying to make is a large loop, you know, probably about um, two and a half to three foot long loop. And you want that in order to um, get the yarn washed and also to be able to twist it into a skein. It's a, a wonderful way to um, it's a wonderful way to store yarn so that it doesn't get stretched out of shape. Twisting it into a, a skein is just a nice non-pressurized way to store yarn. So it's the preferred way to store hand spun. And of course the idea is hand spun is still kinky. It's still pretty kinky. It's got a lot of energy in it. So we need to keep it under tension in the loop until we wash it and finish it. That post on our blog does also show how to wind onto a nitty knotty. If you start by holding the first piece against the center piece of your nitty knotty, you'll go up, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. You can just continue repeating that to yourself until you've wound up the entire length of yarn. This is a pretty invaluable tool when you're a spinner, a nitty knotty, because you will be managing yarn. You'll be taking it off the spindle, wanting to be able to put it into a pretty hank that you can photograph, that you can store, that you can send to someone else. Oh, and I really like how pretty this yarn is becoming. You can see the pattern in it, the stripy pattern already. If I didn't mention before, this is a Polworth and Silk Blend from Huckleberry Knits was the fiber that I used. And when you wind this on, you do want to wind it fairly loosely so that it's easy to get off the nitty knotty. You want enough tension to keep it from kinking up. If you let this go, it becomes a little kinky but not so much tension that you're really stretching it. Now we're coming to that place on the spindle where I did some fancy stuff around the top to make a stop. So I'm going to have to carefully unwind that. So now that I've taken it off there, it will unwind normally the rest of the way. So I'll put it back in the jar. I sure find those deep jars really handy. I used to use bowls, which was great, but whenever uh, you had a little too much twist or something, they would jump out of the bowl. So the depth of the jar really is nice. 
Look at that beautiful patterning on the yarn. It's really looking nice. It's fun after all your hard work to see, begin to see the results of what your yarn looks like and how it's going to knit up. Well, knitting it up is another joy altogether. All right. And when you come to the end of the yarn, you're going to want to trace back so that you can tie the end of the yarn to the beginning piece. And that completes your loop. I'll just cut off the extra. And I'll use these, these extra pieces, or you can use commercial yarn. I'll use these extra pieces to make figure eight ties. along each length of the Nitty Knotty, or about one-fourth of the way through. If you're doing it on chairs, you'll want about four ties. On the Nitty Knotty, we're just able to go to the four areas. Don't want to tie them too tight if you can help it. So that the water and everything when you wash gets down into all areas. And on this last one I'll show you up close how to do a figure eight tie. So a figure eight tie is just split the yarn in the middle, bring it in between the two and then back behind so that each is enclosed in a little loop each side, just like a little figure eight. And that's all there is to it.